a couple of important pressing matters to discuss. First of all, if you haven't done so already, check out the OTR Essential Store at Pro Wrestling Tees and hashtag buy a shirt, damn it. Buy a shirt. I'm not asking for much here. Just buy a shirt. Show the hockey some love. My shirts are on the way and yours should be too. Next, if you haven't done so already, shame on you, but you got a chance to rectify a previous wrong. Hashtag subscribe or die. Find that little red button and click it. I promise you won't be disappointed. And then click the bell, what the hell, so that way you get the notification whenever there's a new video on this OTR Central channel. And a special message here. First off to Fool Killer. I need your help. No more live streaming Fool Killer. We need the old school one-liner bad pun bitching and moaning Fool Killer that gets a haircut. We need fourth dimension fool killer. We need all of it back. And okay, Fabe, I see you, dog. You're trying to bail. But we're not going to let it happen. We need you reviewing Impact Wrestling because, frankly, there aren't that many options or alternatives or any good viable alternatives at this point in time. Very few of them. And if I got to sit there and watch this crap, so do you. It's that simple. And, frankly, we all need to band together at this point in time To help hashtag save Impact Wrestling. We've got to save it. It's up to us. Because God knows this fucking company is not trying to. That's what I got to say. Oh, and another thing. What happened to the Swole Mates? Did they really get canceled after one week? Because it was like Pop TV ghosted on them this week. Impact Wrestling, the show, ghosted on them this week. I saw no references, no mentions. This company a few years ago was promoting Bellator for Spike and they were just there as much as anything else as an avenue to promote Bellator for Spike but at least it was Bellator now we're at a point a couple years later where we're promoting cringy everybody knows this shit's terrible soon to be canceled shows on pop tv like who as a network executive looks at those two fucks and thinks let's make a show called Swole Maze that's bound to captivate the people that's bound To draw the people in. I mean, seriously. I'm just saying. So those weeks of having these guys appear for absolutely no payoff is so typical of this company and clearly Pop TV as well. Anyways, on to the show. Another week where we dove right into a wrestling match. And sometimes I'm okay with that. Sometimes I'm not. In this particular case, we dove into a wrestling match with some people that I actually give a shit about. So I was okay with it. And I will say this. It went over just one 15-minute segment. It got plenty of time. I do have to point out, though, you have the Orlando mayor there. Frankly, a lot of people outside of Orlando aren't going to give a shit, and probably a lot of people inside of Orlando don't give a shit. But if you are going to have the mayor appear, why would you not promote it in some way, shape, or form? You just randomly throw him out there. He's there to announce the entrance for this match, and then that's pretty much it. And I'm really disappointed. It's a reminder of where this company is and has been for years that we still do our shitty ass TV tapings in the impact zone because these guys tried their best. They tried to have a good match and they deserved better crowd participation. Fuck the impact zone. And I'm get so frustrated when I have to sit there and watch these talents kind of flow in the breeze in this shitty wrestling environment. It's an amusement park attraction is what it is, and it's a goddamn shame. And I wish it didn't have to be like that. With that said, I'm really ready for the EC3 Moose feud to come. I do have one thing to point out for your wrestling hero, Ethan Carter III. I know we call this finisher now the Ethan Carter driver. Me personally, I feel like it should be called EC's D. What I mean is, once you get it locked in, Ethan Carter III... Your opponent's going to feel that D all over their faces. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But it was a good opening. The the weird thing about it, though, was like the first half hour of the show was pretty much this match. And then there was a lot of, I don't even really remember if they did anything. The only thing that stood out was they had some dude who was a standby wrestler. What the fuck? Because the last thing you needed was one more jobber on this roster that nobody knows who the fuck this guy is. You need to be getting talent over. You need to be making stars or making franchise pieces for your company. Not introducing gimmicks like a standby fucking wrestler. 
That's what you do when you have a main event scene. That's what you do when you have a solid X division. That's what you do when you have a solid mid card, a solid tag team division, a solid knockouts division. And you could argue that you have very little to none of that. So why are you devoting any television time to a stupid fucking gimmick like the standby wrestler? That's just fucking dumb. And what else was dumb is having Lashley come out and call out Bruce Pritchard. Why is Tyrus just standing there? Is he injured or something that I don't know about? Why is he just there? I, I don't get it. And why are we sending Matt Seidel at Bobby fucking Lashley? So Bobby Lashley is a multiple-time world champion, a long-reigning world champion, and he goes from being beaten by ADR to then getting screwed out of his rematch, which I had even forgot about. That's how bad it was. To now we're sending Matt Seidel at him. I don't get it. And then on top of that, Bruce Pritchard's coming out. We're more concerned about the Titantron graphics or whatever the hell you want to call their big screen putting over a Something to Wrestle With podcast than what's actually going on on the fucking show. And why did this segment only get five fucking minutes? You basically had a half hour of show elapse with only one real notable thing go on that was that six-man tag. A bunch of crap. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Where's the flow of the show? Where is the time management? What are you trying to do? And then you hurry up and rush through the segment and it's done in five fucking minutes. You had more time. Believe me, you needed more time. What really didn't need more time, though, was a Super X Cup match between Davey Richards and Taiji Ichimura, or however the hell you say Ishimura's first name. Um, now, personally, I always thought Davey Richards was overrated, never been huge on the American Wolves. I know that some of you are. What the fuck ever. But I thought it was really selfish of him to go out of his way to announce earlier this week that he was leaving the company knowing damn good and well that he had this match coming up on Thursday night on TV. He could have at least waited until the match was over on TV to announce that, hey, I'm done with the company. Hey, I'm moving on. But this selfish fuck couldn't help himself. He couldn't wait. And it wasn't done in a way to say, hey, come watch my last match for this company. It was done in a way to say, hey, I'm going to do something else. I'm fucking out of here. So with all that said... Goodbye, good luck, and good fucking riddance. You're taking up a spot that somebody else that actually wants to fucking be there could probably do more with than overrated-ass fucking Davey Richards. And ultimately, this match was one gigantic waste of time because we already knew Davey Richards was leaving. You already know he's fucking losing the match. Why the hell would you bother watching it? Also, what the fuck was up with Ishimura's trunks? That was just all types of suspect. Like, almost like Dolph Ziggler would look at it and even think, that's really suspect. But then you think about it, that's probably something Dolph Ziggler would wear on the fucking house. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Anyways, this whole Super X Cup has been incredibly underwhelming. You brought in eight guys for this tournament, and there's maybe one to one and a half of them that I give any shits about whatsoever. I like how beforehand... They will bother to introduce the guys a little bit and give you some type of insight and background into who they are. New Japan, take a lesson here. But this was terrible. And again, knowing the way this was going to play out, why would you fucking bother? The last knockout standing match was really the highlight of the show to me, though. Rosemary and Sienna had a decent match. Went perfect, but it was pretty good. It was disappointing that it was in that one-hour main event slot because, frankly, this shit should have main evented. It really should have. It was the most consequential, important thing to happen on the show. It had a title on the line. This should have main evented, especially for a company historically in the past, where the knockouts have had some of their higher rated television segments, and generally across the board, women can produce ratings for television programs. So why would you not build your entire event, your entire two-hour show, around Rosemary Sienna last knockout standing match for the knockouts title? Why wouldn't you do that? And what's really a shame about this is these ladies did what you should have been doing in the last knockout standing match. They're going outside of the ring. They're going into the crowd. You had that one six spot with Rosemary and Sienna dangling. I mean, they did all types of crazy shit here. Even the finishing bump when Rosemary gets sent by Sienna off the turnbuckle and through the damn table. I mean, that was intense shit. This was a good, solid match, period. Not just a good knockouts match. It should have main evented, but more importantly, they did all of this shit for absolutely zero fucking reaction. 
Shame on that fucking Universal Studios amusement park fucking crowd for not getting into this more because these ladies, frankly, merit it better and deserve better. And shame on this fucking company for being in a position in 2017 where they still have to do all their freaking TV tapings weeks ahead of time in a goddamn amusement park. You ever want a reminder of how bushly this bullshit-ass company could be? You look at the fact that a match like this gets absolutely no fucking reaction because they're doing it in front of a crowd that isn't paying the company directly. They get it as part of the admission to Universal Studios, and it's a fucking amusement park attraction. Unbelievable. I feel bad for these ladies. I wonder what's next for them, but a good match, a highlight of the night. And a secondary highlight to me was Trevor Lee, Octagon Cito. I will say this, again, why is Octagon Cito continuing to get television time for Global Force Wrestling when he is a AAA talent and nobody gives a shit about him as a Global Force Wrestling fan? This whole concept of Jarrett, the whole foundation of Global Force Wrestling and being basically a modern day NWA. Ding dong, dumb dick, why the fuck would you try to copy and mirror a brand, a product, a business model that effectively died R.I.P. three fucking decades ago. You want to know why nobody else is really trying this shit? Because it's a stupid fucking idea and it doesn't work. You're putting over other companies' talents instead of your own. And especially at this point in time where you need to be creating stars for your own brand, identity pieces, franchise pieces. You're wasting precious national primetime television on guys like fucking minis like Octagon Cito. Who in the fuck does that? And again, during the match between Trevor Lee and Octagon Cito, we mentioned Rey Mysterio and kind of throw that name out there. Makes you wonder if he is going to eventually be there. And frankly, I hope he is because it would give them a little bit of a shot of life, I would think. But beyond that, it just reminds you when you see an Octagon Cito that he's not a fucking Rey Mysterio. It's unbelievable. But what else is also puzzling is why is Sanjay Dutt getting stopped once again when Trevor Lee illegitimately has his title? Like Trevor Lee has stolen property from him. If anything, couldn't Sanjay Dutt actually technically call the cops in this matter? And and why is Trevor Lee allowed to continue to walk around with this title? As interesting as the storyline is of it's Trevor Lee's title, but Sanjay Dutt actually has it. Who's the real X Division champion? It's one of the most interesting stories this company has going on right now. How can we not be bothered to pay attention to the logic here and make it better? And why don't we use this storyline a little bit more like have Sanjay Dutt tracing down Trevor Lee throughout the course of the entire night? Because again, it's one of the few interesting things you fucking have going on. Oh, I get it. Because we want to sit there and do this dumb shit with Grado. Again. I have no problem with comedy and wrestling. I enjoy comedy and wrestling. But if you're trying to do Eric Young shit, you better have fucking Eric Young. Furthermore, once again, why would the fucking Impact Wrestling Twitter handle be referencing Laurel Van Ness and her Twitter handle, which clearly calls out that she is a Canadian wrestler. And why in the fuck would Grado need to marry her when she's here on a visa too? That's not how any of this shit fucking works. I assure you. This isn't funny, and it's not particularly well written out. And are you doing all this shit to get to a Congo Kong and fucking Grado storyline? Who's writing this shit? And who's booking this shit? This was fucking stupid. Just like it's kind of stupid when you get to Alberto El Patron and LAX in this one-on-three gauntlet match. A couple of weeks ago, if you remember, I kind of complained about how Alberto and Bobby Lashley, your top two guys... One of them the world champion, one of them the former world champion. We're having to go toe-to-toe in a struggle with the tag champions. Now, a couple of weeks later, Alberto blows through Homicide like it's nothing. Blows through one of the two fucking guys from LAX, the tag champs, who I don't know which one it fucking was because it doesn't fucking matter because Impact doesn't make it seem like it fucking matters because the only guy that fucking matters in this group is Conan. All to sit there and get to the disqualification kind of wipeout finish. It was just dumb. The only redeeming quality for this for me as the main event of this show, is you got the Veterans of War, whatever the hell they call Oh my God, it's Crimson and the other dude who I don't know who the hell it is. You got kind of that old school feeling, random baby face team coming in to make the save. And oh my God, you might actually have something here in terms of a potential tag title feud. Why would the tag champions actually have to be feuding with somebody over the tag titles? But then it leaves the ultimate question, why the fuck is Alberto being bothered with this shit here? 
And what's going to come of all of this? It's going to be his family versus LAX, or even worse, Alberto versus Conan for the fucking title down the road? Who's booking this shit? Again, it cannot possibly be that hard to write a decent wrestling show. And this show does have people that you can care about. There are things that are good. So I don't want to bury it like it's a total shit show because it is not. But it is so frustrating to see the lack of attention to detail. The lack of importance placed on ironing out your story. Like, look, if you're not going to have the best production values, and frankly, when I watch Pop TV and I watch what is allegedly the HD channel, this shit doesn't look HD. I don't know if it's the lighting. I don't know what the fuck it is. Is it actually HD? Is it not? I don't fucking know. Sometimes it looks terrible. The best looking shots are the rewinded super slow-mo shots. It cannot be that hard. If you don't have the big name stars, if you don't have the tremendous production values, if you don't have the greatest crowds, then give us the most interesting characters you possibly can. Give us the most interesting storylines you possibly can. And give us the match quality that we don't get from WWE on a consistent basis that incorporates great characters and great storytelling. Of course, as has so often been the problem with this company over the years, they do none of that shit. They used to at least be able to get by with a couple of shocking things, some really stupid crap, and some big names from the past. Well, they don't have those big names from the past, and they're not doing anything shocking or fucking controversial here. We're just going through the fucking motions. It was striking this week. I'm sitting there and watching. I'm like, man, they really could use James Storm and Scott Steiner on TV right now. It's not a be-all, end-all, and it won't solve everything. It won't solve many things, but at least solve something. At least you'll get some people on TV that you might actually give a shit about. Again, Bruce Pritchard, Dutch Mantel, Scott Demore, Conan, whoever the fuck is involved, the founder, fucking Nordholm, whoever the fuck is involved in writing this shit, take a look in the mirror at yourself, the person to your left, the person in your life, right? And then everybody smacked the shit out of everybody. It is not that hard. And there will still be the occasional person that defends this shit like this is really fucking good. What was really fucking good about this show? I mean, even from an Impact Wrestling standard over the years, this shit was terrible. Just because there are a couple of good things and a couple of highlights doesn't take away from the greater suck of it all. I'm just saying. And the ironic thing is, This has actually ended up being probably overall the best show I've seen since I've come back to watching Impact Wrestling, and that's not saying much. Come on, man. Pick up the pace. Jesus. Hopefully by the time we get to Destination X, that live show August 17th will actually have a decent show. God forbid. I know. But anyways, this is the Schlag Daddy from OTR Essential. Damn it, we are doing our best to hashtag Save Impact Wrestling. Make sure you buy a shirt, subscribe, or die. And remember, it's not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. Goodbye.